This podcast is brought to you by SciFi, the world leader in psychology fitness training. SciFi is scientifically proven to help you optimize your physical, mental, and emotional performance through functional training of your brain, body, and breath. For the first time, have your own clinical psychologist, personal trainer, life coach, breathwork teacher, and mediation instructor all in one. Instead of having to wait months or even years for results, you get them in 75 minutes or less. That's the sci-fi difference. Rewire your brain, retrain your body, and refocus your breath. Learn more at psyfi.nyc. It's been said, you, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. In the ring, I control my own destiny. I win, I win, I lose, I lose. It's in my hands. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. I face life head on, but I've learned to welcome the challenges even in the ring. From the boxing side of it, every time we fall, we get back up. That's what life's tough, boxers are tougher is all about. In the guest corner, he comes to us from the Steel City, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, by way of Lviv, Ukraine. He brings a strong record of 14 wins against only three defeats with eight big wins by knockout. Please welcome to the podcast the former NABA Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Lubomir, Demolition Man Pinchuk. Hey, hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Hey, Lubo, great to see you, man. Thanks uh, thanks for jumping on. We really appreciate it. Hey, sure, sure, no problem. Thank you for having uh, me. So, look, I got to ask you, the first question I got to ask you is – your picture on first off, I you know, great look, classic look. I love the I love the bald head, the beard. I'm I'm totally hey, on board with it, bold, obviously. Bald is bald is beautiful, you know, for everyone who's like, oh bald, bald, battery be great isn't bald. No, it's ain't true. You just people just lying to yourself and you know bald is beautiful. It's like a not no fake in it, you know, just uh maybe yeah. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, your your picture on Box Rack, uh, what they take that when you were like about four years old? Where did they get that picture? Well, it actually wasn't that long ago. It was like 2019. Yeah, 2018, maybe 19. So, yeah, when I came here, when I came to U.S., to Pittsburgh, I actually had hair on my head. And I started to work with Mike McSorley and JJ. And, you know, you see what happened to me now? Yeah, but but yeah I it's actually we have a funny story me. about it. So I had my fight in January in a Turning Stone Casino. And, you know, like, they're making those, like, little badges for every fighter where, where it's have your picture and stuff. So I didn't see it from a, from the very beginnings. And I'm walking back to Mike and JJ. And JJ's standing there and looking at me. He's like, hey, what is that? I was like, what do you mean? I was like, it's my badge. So I'm looking at that stuff. And there is my box rack picture. I was like, oh, man, couldn't they change it? Yeah, it looked like a totally different person. But, yeah. <laughs> Did anybody give you a hard time, or you got through the security okay? No, no, I'm, no, I'm I was good. <laughs> well, good to hear. Hey, on a on a more serious note, uh, how is your family? Uh, I hope everybody's okay right now. Uh, my family is uh, good and safe for now. Like I'm from Lviv, like you said, it's uh, like one hour away from Poland. So um, I I I'm guessing it's like safest city in Ukraine, which is it's been bombed already like a three or four times. Like once, it was a Early this week, so they dropped a bomb on a some military object in in tire service. So it was like a seven or eight people dead and a lot of injuries. So it was literally like five miles away from my home. But wow. they good, they good for now. They, you know, they good as they can be. Well, we'll definitely keep a good thought from. I mean, I can't even imagine uh, what you guys are going through right now. It's got to be tough. Yeah, thank you. You know, it just it just what it is, I guess. It's like not like anyone of us can do something. So, no, you're absolutely right. Um, how did how did you wind up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Uh, so when I was uh, like probably 17, 16, I always wanted to turn a professional, and I started looking for people in a box rack, just to randomly looking for people, texting to them, and ask if uh, they would have any interest in uh, to watch my fights and maybe work with me as a pro. And Mike was one of those people. Um, I was sending him my amateur fights back then. And he's like, yeah, you know, I like what I see. So let me let me find out more about all this immigration process because I never had to work with it. And a couple of years after, I would say, we had to text through Facebook and we had a couple of Skype calls. And I guess maybe two years, two and a half years after that, I came here to Pittsburgh. Nice. And you like the city, right? 
I do, I do love this city. It's perfect. It's close to ev to everything. It's have everything what you need. Yeah, I do love this city. Yeah, I'm, I love the city too. It's uh, my adopted hometown, so I'm definitely a huge fan. Um, and your your club that you uh, that you fight out of is named after two of the best fighters that ever came out of Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is a lot. There is a lot of stuff in Pittsburgh to do. Like, there is a lot of places to go. There is a good food, a lot of activities to do, like football, baseball, hockey. You can go and do do it all. Well, we're definitely going to hit on that a little later on in the uh, on the show. I got a couple of questions I want to ask you about that. But um, look, do you know the name of the show is Life's Tough, Boxes Are Tougher? Um, mm -hmm. You know, considering what you're dealing with, I don't I don't think we can ever question how tough you are. But um, but we will ask why you you know why are you tougher than life? Tell us a challenge that you've had to overcome. Uh, to be honest, I there is, there was some some stuff like my, when I was a younger when I was back in Ukraine like my dad had health issues he had like heart uh, problem, but I guess tough is what it is. It was now, especially training for this fight. It was a lot a lot on my plates. With everything was happening in Ukraine, then I had stuff happening in my life here. Then my girlfriend. Uh, she found out that her dad had a cancer so it was like you know everything everything one and one after the other one and i guess yeah i guess this training for this fight was really difficult and i had to just overcome through all of this and just find a way to keep going and that's it well but like you said everything would happen happening for a reason everything would happen to us make us stronger you know so if if you'll be able to strong enough and overcome all of this so you'll be stronger for later and that's it how did uh how did you find out about um what was going on in ukraine so i remember like now it was a wednesday night uh i already knew what i have a fight against the federici so before going to bed i did a couple posts on my social media instagram and facebook I went to the bed totally fine like nothing happened waking up on thursday morning to a text message from my mom we have a war in Ukraine. It started. They literally bombing every city in Ukraine. Like people dying. And my girlfriend waking up next to me. And she's like, hey, did, did you talk to your mom? There is, there is, a, there is a war started in Ukraine. Was like, yeah. yeah. Wow. It was, it, was, it, was, it was really difficult, I would say, first week. Yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it was tough. Now, were you in camp yet for the Federici fight or no? Yes. Yes. We already started to train for it. Yeah. Wow. No, there is a lot. There was a lot, a lot, a lot of thing. Like a uh, trainer, Mike, even asked me a couple times. He was like, hey, "Are you sure what you want to do it? You know, because I know you have a lot in your plate. I know you have a lot of stuff to deal with. So if you don't want to have it, so I'm just done." But just uh, you know, that's what we have to do. Like I said, as a fighter, you know, if you already signed it up something and I want that fight, so I was like, "Hey, I'm just gonna do it, and everything will be fine." And I think with boxing also helped a lot. Gym helps a lot because as soon as I'm stepping into a gym, my mind just like switches, you know. Everything on a training, on a fight, and on my preparation for a fight. It's like, it's basically like sanctuary, you know. Just I'm just forgetting about everything for that one hour, hour and a half. So I think gym, gym helps a lot. Tell, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. So, you know, tell us your process and... Uh... And how, you know, you said it helps a lot, which is great. And we, we found that a lot of our guests have said that, you know, being involved in the sport and exercise has helped. Talk about your process and, and how it works. Like, I guess it's not just exercises, especially for me as a boxer. I know that I have to concentrate on something different. I have to think about fight. I have to think what I'm going to do in a fight. And I also have to think what he'll do. So I guess my mind just switches to it and I'm just trying to concentrate already on that day when I have a fight and that pretty much it mm, you know just all what I have in my head and just training what what I should do next what is going to be my next move what is going to be my move next week what is going to be my next move in a fight and that's all what I have in my head and then I'm leaving the gym it stays with me for a couple more minutes and then you know you're back to normal you're back to all this would happen around us yeah yeah and I, I can imagine what was when you so we after your day of training you know was your first thing a call home was it you know social media like what did you do to to learn more about what was going on well i was i was checking looking at social media every day like a couple times a day but i was 
I'm still calling. I'm calling my parents, my mom, and my dad every day. Like sometimes even twice, two, three times a day, just to make sure that everything's fine. But yeah, just looking social media, reading news from social medias, and calling back to my mom, asking what happened, how was it? Because you know some of those stuff that they tell us in the news, it's not exactly how it was it. So I was just preferring call call my parents, who's dealing with all of this, and they they like first people to see it. And I was just asking and checking how everything is and what happened. What have they been saying? So how are they holding up? Like I said, first couple of days, like a first week, maybe two, it was very difficult for uh, for me and for my mom because she was like all stressed. And my sister lived with my mom back then, my sister and her uh, son. But now she moved to Italy. I have an aunt living in Italy and she stayed with them. So my mom is a little more relaxed since then because she's like, you know, yeah, at least you two already gone. You staying, you safe and you staying in uh, Pittsburgh and your sister went to Italy. So she's going to stay with Anne. So it's fine. It's just me and, me and your dad now. So she's a little bit more loose now, but like we had this bombing in my city. So, you know, she's, she was again all stressed up and stuff. Wow. So like I'm said, it's changing not even every day. It's changing every minute. Yeah, I, I can't even I can't even fathom. I don't think anybody, unless you've been in that situation, can. can hey, trust me, understand. I even don't know what I would do. I just like I'm said, I'm just looking all this through social media, I'm talking to my friends, to my to my parents, and uh, it's difficult and stuff. And but yeah, I would if you would ask me like a year ago, I would never even thought that we can be in this situation. Like I would never even thought. Like, Ukraine and Russia had this stuff happening between us for, like, last eight years, but I never thought they actually going to make a move. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, it seemed like they kind of waited till after the Olympics to make it, uh, to make their move, and it's been... Yeah, well, you know, yeah because they'll be, they'll be uh, banned from everywhere now. No one wants to deal with Russia at all. Just, no. To be honest, I don't think I don't think that they were prepared to go and have a war with Ukraine because look how how many losses they already have. They have like a twenty thousand in a in the army and the people, how many tanks and everything. They're losing so much money. Like has Putin's army not prepared for it at all? Like no. they don't know they don't know what they're doing. All that they know what what to do. They just know how to steal stuff from Ukraine and how to kill innocent people and rape a woman. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Like they don't. They don't know. They don't know how to deal with the actual Ukrainian military. They have no idea what they're doing. No, and and they're tough. The Ukrainian military. You know, uh, the boxing world has obviously been affected as well. Um, you know, Usyk was uh, was over there. I, he since has gone back now and got and starting to get ready to uh, to fight Joshua in the summer. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the Klitschko's have been on, uh, kind of on the. Uh, the front line, and then Lomachenko, too. Talk a little bit about those guys. Uh, well, what can I say? Klitschko's, it's like a heroes for Ukraine now. Both of them were always, like, people to look up look up to, but especially now. Back then, they were, like, like a, just a two heavyweight world champions, but now it's, like, it's like person who do you want to be. Like, kids can look at them, like, oh, yeah, that's, that's what I want to be in the future, not just as a fighter. I just want to be as a person like that. Like, look, those two men have everything what they need. I can't even imagine how much money each of them have. And yeah. they're still staying in Ukraine and fighting from their country. And just so you know, neither of them was born in Ukraine. Both of them were yeah. born in different countries because their dad was uh, like a military man and he had to travel a lot, I guess. So they both of them were born in different countries. But yes, they lived in Ukraine for, like, for their whole life. Well, I guess not even now because... Both of them is older, and uh, Vladimir Klitschko spent a lot of time in Germany and here in the U.S., so... But, yeah. hey, they're like, hey, our dad was military, and he's, he taught us to defend our country, and that's what we do. Like, Usyk? I think when Usyk made the right decision to just go and train for the Joshua fight. Because what he's going to do? Is he really going to go to the army or take a machine gun and go to the war? No, he can't do that. Man is not prepared for it. But if he'll step in the ring, if he'll go and show Ukrainian flag to everyone, yeah, it's going to be a lot better for the country. That's what I think Lomachenko should do. But I think Lomachenko didn't do it because there is, he has his own like, like issues. And sometimes people are not happy with everything that he does and everything that he says, you know. So I think he's just trying to make something right now. He's already like 
they push him right next to the wall and he didn't know what to do. That's, that's my honest opinion, but who knows, maybe he's maybe he's really a man who loves his country and he just decided, no, I don't need any of those belts and I'm just going to stay and defend my city. So, but I think that Usyk did the right decision and he's going to do a lot a lot more and better stuff for Ukraine, just stepping into the ring against Joshua, especially beating Joshua, because I think that's what he's going to do. And showing to everyone that Ukrainian flag. You think he'll, so you think he'll win the rematch? Uh, I think he'll win it. Even with everything that would happen in Ukraine, and there is a lot of pressure on him. There is a lot of a lot of stuff happening in his head also, but I think he'll win a rematch easily. I think it's going to be even worse for Joshua than it was the first fight. I, what I'm trying to say, uh, I will not be surprised if he'll stop Joshua. Wow, that's a big, that's a big big claim. Um, if if you had your druthers, would that be a dream fight for you to fight Usyk? I mean, I know you fight a cruiser. He, hey, you know, he was the dream, undisputed dream cruiser. Fight would fight, dream fight would be to fight Joshua because Joshua is the most money. So yeah, I would fight Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, spoken spoken like a true uh, American, my friend. Um, hey, I think I'm already a little bit past that. You know, looking for a belt. So I already, I was trying to get a belt from from Federici. Look what happened. I had to give up him my belt. So well, you know, I'm I'm I was always looking for the money, and you know, in the very end, yeah, being a world champion, yeah, it's good for you, nice. But when you retire and you still, sometimes you can be a world champion but not make any money. So yeah. I'd rather retire with some money in my bank accounts and have all of those belts and being like a 70 years old and telling to my grandkids, oh, yeah, look, that's what I did like a 50 years ago. I was like, nah. You know, I, my belt's not going to fit your family, so. No, you can't really take that to the bank and mm. uh, cash, cash the check. Um, hey, look, the, the, you know, uh, the, the Freddie Ricci fight. I, I, I mean, I had you. I thought you won it. I, th I thought you edged him. I thought, I, I thought you got him by uh, yeah, ninety six, ninety four. It was a tough. It was a tough fight. Either way, it could have gone. It was a tough fight. It wasn't my best performance, and I'm not happy with everything I did. But like I said, I'm not gonna look as if as an excuse with everything was happening with me in my life. I'm not gonna make it as an excuse. I just. I just didn't do a good job, but I don't think I lost a fight. And I'm not saying it just because you said it or my friends and my girlfriend said it. There was a lot of people who actually know boxing and they didn't see it, didn't see me losing that fight. Like no, there, no, was, I, there was yeah, everyone I, in that arena who thought that I won a fight, especially when last judge said 99 to 91 for Federici. It was ridiculous. Yeah, and, and, and I... Uh... Well, it, it, listen, every fight, there's always one judge who doesn't actually watch the fight and just writes the number down. I, I've, I'm convinced of that. Um, yeah, 99-91. It's funny because the commish, Randy Gordon, had you 99-91. Yeah, which is, look, I'll be I honest. I don't, think, I don't think I lost a fight, but I would not give it to myself 99-91. to I think it was a little bit too much, but you know what I'm saying? If you're going to do me, so don't do me at least that bad. 99-91, to like what I want just one round, oh, well... Yeah, just just don't don't do me that bad. No, and and, and listen, I'm uh, I'm not biased either. I'm uh, I'm 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 friends with Federici. He's a uh, he's a good guy, and uh, I've known him now for a couple hey, have, of years. Have, so, I have nothing against him, man. Like I'm saying, he seems like a nice guy. Well, he spoke he spoke no English, but he seems like a nice guy. All of yeah. his team was pretty nice and stuff. So I have nothing against him. I, I wish him luck after it, but like I'm said. Well, you'll listen. If if this has proven anything, the fact that you went through with the fight, uh, dealing with uh, you know some of the personal stuff you've had to deal with, I, I think that shows a lot of character on your part. And and you know, look, I think it's better when the best fight the best. I think it's much better for you to lose a close decision to a guy who is tough and seasoned and as unconventional as Federici, then you going and walking in and knocking out some tomato can. Yeah. 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 Like, like, yeah like, I'm, like I said to everyone, you know, it is what it is. It's already behind us. It's done. So nothing that I can do now it would happen and happen. Either one, I won a fight. I lost a fight. It was a bad decision. It was a good decision. So it is what it is. We can't change it now. So let me get back home. Relax. Think what I did wrong because I know I did a lot of wrong stuff in that fight so let me think about it and i'll be back and i'll decide what i should do after it so uh you had mentioned during uh camp two you also had to deal with uh you know i think one of the scariest words in the english language cancer 
Um, are you okay talking about that? You want to yeah, hit on yeah, that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, 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 it's fine. So, so yeah. So uh, tell us what happened and, and how you had to deal with it. So my girlfriend found out her dad had cancer. Well, I'm going to say it had because so it was like a it's very strong type of cancer and he just made it three weeks since I found out. Three or four weeks. So it started from a lung cancer and it went to his back and then his body just gave up and he just passed away. Is he, is he from the Berg, from Pittsburgh? Uh, it's like three hours away from Pittsburgh. It's called the Boiling Springs. But yeah, it's yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's it's tough. That's that. So yeah, it was work. it was a lot. It was a lot in both of us. It was a stuff that happened to me, and she was sad about everything that happened in my life. Then you know, and one day I just went to to see my dentist, and her mom like sent me a text message. She was like, "Are you around? Are you around, okay?" I was like, "No, I'm not. What's that? What's happening?" She's like, "Yeah, if you if you can, just go go home and give her a hug." And I get back, and I find out yeah, with her dad to have health issues and stuff. So yeah, like I'm sad. Everything was happening in our lives, so happening for reasons. So I guess it's had had to happen, and it will make us stronger in future. Yeah, and uh, and and what is the situation with him now? Uh, he's 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 dead. He died. Yeah, he, oh, he, he didn't make he didn't make he didn't make it much longer. He passed away. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I I, I thought I knew that, and I thought I heard that, but I. I wasn't sure when you said it was three or four weeks since. So, yeah, um, he, yeah. He, he so sorry for your loss. Four weeks after. Thank you. So, you know, you, you continue, you move on, and uh, and you deal with it. What do you, um, as far as the grieving process and stuff like that? Uh, you have any advice? Anything you can give as far as uh, you know how you had to deal with it, and then how you had to, uh, you know. Comfort your girlfriend. Uh, all that I can say, and my best advice is going to be never give up. Just even if it's really hard and something bad happening to you, and every day seems like worse than the day before, just look for something good. You know, like I said, everything that happen in our life happens for the reason. So just overcome through it, and you'll see you'll see good days. You know. So, like, there is a lot of bad stuff happening in my life. Like, we have a thing with Ukraine. We have my personal issues. And everything going to happen in my family now with my girlfriend. So, it's mean that something good has to happen sooner or later, you know. So, I don't know how much longer it's going to be. But there is going to be good days also. Like, even that, it's not that even important, you know. Uh, that's how I, my vision just changed a lot. I was like, I was never happy with you know, how much I make in a box and how, how how much I do that, how I do this, how I do that, how many fights do I have a year. And then I was like, hey, look, people in Ukraine having a war, they have to fight for their life. And I'm I'm here complaining about this, would I been underpaid or something, or I'd, or I'd not make as much money as I want to make, you know. So I would say just be strong, push yourself through it, and look for something positive, and every, even in every bad thing would happen to you. That's it. Well, I think I I don't think you could uh, set it much better than that. That's phenomenal. By the way, your English is is spot on too. Great, great Thank job, you. man. Thank you. Great job. So, uh, and I, I don't think, uh, we could, we could sum it up any better than that. And I, I, uh, I can't thank you enough for being on. It's, uh, I'm, I'm hey, really like excited. I said, thank you for having me. Like, Hey, it's not, it's not taking a lot from me. Just sit here and talk to you. Yeah. It's all my pleasure. Well, thank you. So we do something on the show. We call it the Fast Five. Okay. Um, we uh, it's kind of like the last round of the of the, the bout here, and uh, we're going to ask you. Uh, we're going to ask you a couple of questions. Just want you to uh, give us your answers and tell us what you think. All right. Mm -hmm. You good? You excited? Yeah. We're going to do this. <laughs> well, all right. If, if my brain going to work fast enough to give you answers, <laughs> you remember that I'm getting hit to my head. So. Uh. <laughs> All right, so uh, look, you're uh, a Pittsburgh guy uh, through and through. Uh, without question, you have uh, Pittsburgh toughness, which I've seen firsthand. Um, but I got to ask the question that everybody asks everybody from Pittsburgh: uh, Permanis or Peppies? Uh, I never had Peppies. Oh, no, I did have Peppies once. Permanis. Permanis. What's your go-to sandwich at Permanis? Uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. All right. Pittsburgh with right. the double meat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Double meat, double meat Pittsburgh. That hey, is... I'm, I'm a big boy. I need to eat. I need, <laughs> yeah, that's I, need, what you're gonna... I need to feed that body, you know? 
You're going to be fighting that heavyweight soon, my friend, eating uh, double meat Pittsburgh. Hey, that's where it's all that money at, you know? Like I'm sad, but I was going to pay, so that's where I'm going to go. <laughs> well, keep eating Pittsburghers. You'll definitely hit that. All right, how about uh, Iron City or Iron City Light? <laughs> never had neither one of those. You never had Iron City? Mm-mm. You don't drink beer? I do drink beer, but I don't drink Iron City. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Well, listen, I just said all that stuff about you being a Pittsburgher through and through. I, I don't yeah. I got to take that back unless you drink some Iron City, my friend. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll make sure to go tomorrow and have some Iron City, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, what's your favorite sport other than boxing? Uh, uh, well, I think you you expecting me to say football or something because I'm a Pittsburgher, huh? Uh <laughs> Mm. Well, let's, no, no, let's no. see. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh have a baseball, they have a hockey, and they have football. So, yeah, I'll pick football. Of the three teams, are the Steelers your favorite? Well. Like, you know, Penguins, you know, you got to like the Pens. I'm sure you love the Pens and the Pirates. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. From the three teams, yeah, Steelers would be my favorite, yeah. But and cool. you also know what I'm wearing a Steelers jersey for every my fight, but that's a Jack Lambert jersey, so I'm not a big fan of new Steelers team. I'm not, I'm what's what's gonna be a good way to put it? I'm not one of those juju people. which is I'm super happy when they get rid of him finally. <laughs> they should have not wow. signed him for the last year, but hey. <laughs> Wow, this is I gotta tell you, this is gonna be a controversial episode in Pittsburgh. So not oh, a juju people, people, person. some people are gonna hate me, huh? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think that's possible. Hey, but I like, do think, I, uh, like I'm said, you know, if you look at that older team when we had the Jack Lambert and all of those other people, it's, it was all exactly like you said, Pittsburgh toughness. Now, yeah. now it's now it's totally different. Now it's totally different. You, did you get to did you get to meet any of the Steelers? Because I figure you're you're you know you're definitely a local celebrity there. So no, 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 no. I never I never met any of them. No. Okay. And I'm not I'm not a local celebrity now. No, you're definitely listen. You're a local celebrity. I, was, I go to the Berg quite a yeah, bit. I'm, I'm there, a local uh, celebrity when it's come to go go out somewhere on a Saturday night and do tequila shots. So yeah, I'm a celebrity <laughs> of that. Well, you gotta you gotta do Imperial whiskey and uh, Iron City beer. That's the official. I didn't uh, do whiskey. I didn't do whiskey. <laughs> Tequila. Tequila is rough, man. I don't know if tequila Yeah, is. but it's so good. It's so much better than whiskey. <laughs> um, the, uh, who's your favorite? Do you have a favorite Steeler now? Because you're not a Juju person, you said. So uh, it's definitely not a Juju. So, uh, well, we, they get rid of a ban. So it's going to be, maybe it's going to be that new guy. Uh, Najee. Najee, Najee Harris or whatever his name. Yeah, yeah he seems, there you he go. seems like a good player. I, I think I like him. Excellent, excellent. All right. Um, so some bilingual stuff again. Your English is great. Tell us, uh, tell us your favorite Ukrainian curse word. Uh, well, there is so many of them. You know, Ukrainian is very, very big language and a curse word. So. <laughs> um, well, I can tell you, so you can remember it if you want to just tell to someone something bad. You can say, Okay, and tell us what that means. Well, it's like a fuck you. <laughs> there is, like I'm sad, there is a lot of bad words. I'm not going to teach you all of them. So I'll no, that's a good one, though. Good. Well, you know what? I got your I got your uh, information now, so I'll, I'll hit you up offline and ask you for curse Yeah, yeah you, uh, you can ask me all what you want, yeah, and I'll tell you a lot more <laughs> of it. How about how about yins? You know how to say yins in Ukrainian? Uh, we didn't really have a word like that, so. <laughs> yeah, no. That's what. Uh, McSor does McSorley say yins? Does McSorley say yins? Uh, not very often. I heard it a couple times, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I do know I do know a couple of people would say saying yins like all the time, all the time, nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh. That's that's how uh, that's how I hit it off with him uh, when I when I talked to him I, I met him when he was up here and I said uh, hey how did how did Yins get here and he was like as soon as I said Yinzy like his his face lit up he knew I was uh, I had Pittsburgh roots so uh, pretty pretty cool but yeah mm -hmm. so we gotta we gotta figure out where, well listen when all this craziness is over you're gonna uh, you're gonna introduce the word Yins to the Ukraine so uh, okay I will I will. 
Um, all right, so tell us where uh, else we can find you on social media and uh, where people can follow you, and uh, let's see what we can uh, we can do here. So give yeah, us just phone. usual stuff. My Facebook and my Instagram. Just uh, type it in. My name is going to be Lubmir Pinchak, and that's how you can find me. Well, I can spell for you because my name is so difficult. It's going to be Lubomir, L-Y-U-B-O-M-Y-R, and Pinchak, P-I-N-C-H-U-K. So you can just I, find me in a Facebook and Instagram and do whatever. You have some more questions, you know, uh, you want to know bad words in uh, Ukrainian, so just <laughs> DM me and I'll, I'll teach you more. Well, that's what we get. I, I can't thank you enough. That's uh, phenomenal. We appreciate you jumping on. Uh, I know it's kind of short notice. And you know, it's funny too is uh, you thank goodness you spelled your name, your first name, because we were we were trying to find you and we were spelling your first name wrong. And and I knew and I knew your first name, so I was I can't imagine. But um, and uh, yeah, listen, when I'm in, uh, I'm coming to the Berg. Uh, usually, I come the first week in November for the Steelers. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd love, I'd love to have you at our tailgate and we'll introduce you to some iron city and iron city light. <laughs> hey, just let me know. Let me know. And yeah, I'm actually living like a five minutes walk, 10 minutes walk from a stadium. So yeah, I'll come and see you. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the demolition man. Lubomir Pinchuk. Thanks a lot, pal. Great to have you hey, on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you for having me. That's going to be the final bell for today's podcast. If you like what you hear, give us a like and hit the subscribe button with your best power punch. You can check us out at Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere you can find quality podcasts. We hope our stories inspire you to fight on. We thank you for listening, and remember, life's tough, boxes are tougher. Have a great week, everyone.